Little strokes make a letter, and those letters come together to form words. We assign meanings to those words. Often they express everyday things. A tree, a rock, water, and so on. Other times, a word describes a more complex idea. Have you ever found yourself wondering, wouldn't it be nice if there were a word for it? Well, there is a word for almost everything. For example, the little indentation above your upper lip is called a philtrum. Anomia is a good one to remember. And if the English language falls short, other languages have a rich collection as well. Take the German Kummerspeck, for instance, which translates quite literally to grief bacon. Then there is Colin Wright, a logophile, a lover of words. Colin loved language. He enjoyed words for their strangeness and how specific they could be. He would often look up a word only to find himself distracted by another on the page. And before he knew it, his fingers were cavorting as if in a random dance on the leaves of the lexicon. One of Colin's favorite pastimes was people watching. He would revel in picking individuals out of the crowd and assigning words to them based on his observations. It's nice to see more and more of the world's information getting organized, sorted, indexed, and catalogued, making it easy to find. We now know more of what is where and how to access it. But there's something to be said about serendipity. Sometimes there's no substitute for walking into a random aisle in a library and perusing what books one might bump into. Sometimes getting lost is the only way to find what you really need. You caught me. The fortune's message fits so nicely with the symbolism in the book that Colin couldn't help but wonder if the mysterious girl specifically paired that fortune with that book. But what was the point? Colin wished he had said something to her, asked her what she was doing and why. He wished he at least knew her name. Who are you? I've met a girl. Seriously? Where? The library. Well, technically we haven't met, but check this out. They were everywhere. She hides them in books, but they're special. I mean, check this. Inside of Hitchhiker's Guide was one that read, Don't Panic. That is just weird. It sounds perfect for you. It's not weird, but interesting. I have to find her again. She's a, a bibliolator, just like me. She's geezing. Elisabeth's definitely piquant. Dude, enough with the words. You're giving me a headache. You mean Megram? Cephalogia? I mean it now. Stop. At work. <laughs> so, what do you know about her? A bit spacey, but definitely not stupid. Oh, she comes in often to read. She borrows at least three books a time. She smiles a lot. She's very friendly. Her name is Sophie. Sophie. Yeah, she goes to the library almost every day around two. Thanks. Sophie. Unbeknownst to Colin, one of the individuals he'd pressed for information happened to be a good friend of Sophie's, 
So inevitably, she got wind of his investigation. To reciprocate, she conducted some research of her own. Without realizing it, Sophie had crossed a boundary. What had begun as playful whimsy had transformed into an ardent yearning within her heart. What's up? Do you have anything for me? What? I don't think. A, a slip of note, a paper, anything? No, man, sorry. What's gotten into you? I don't know, man. It's this girl. I, I can't get her out of my head. She's just. She's. I don't know. When will you learn? There's not a word for everything. When will you learn that there is? I just haven't found it. Come on, man. Let's go grab some food. I'm starved. <laughs> Where did that come from? Thanks, you're the best. Wait a minute, what the hell was that? I think of you in the in-between spaces, in the pause before the next heartbeat, in the clench of my chest before I exhale. And perhaps one day, our lives will occupy one space, clasped hands, shared secrets. Sophie, please, I must meet you. I feel that you and I are one and the same. Be here, same time as today, when today becomes nudiestertion. Colin felt the word love was too short. It's only four letters. Surely romance is seven letters and friendship is 10. Together, they make 17. Was that too much? Not enough? The most important things are the hardest to say. They're the things you get ashamed of because words diminish them. Words shrink things that seem limitless when they were in your head to no more than living size when they're brought out. He was tired of words. He was tired of carefully calculating each fragment. He had exhausted himself with all this thought. He was overwhelmed with all the thought processes weighing him down before he made a decision. 
before he conjured a sentence, before words fell off his tongue. He wanted to just stop thinking. There are two times in life when we're most likely to be at a loss for words, when we're happiest and when we're saddest. It's easy to write words about the consolations of love, just look at all the love songs and poems, but how does one describe the love for another for love's sake, for who they are, what they are, for themselves and not what they give? The word love is too short to describe what it is. An infinity of letters and syllables are needed to contain all the depth of its meaning. No word can really convey its ultimate truth like a touch, a look, or a smile. Words belong to the mind. Love belongs to the heart, where words get in the way. <laughs> 